today on Houston Life, how a local couple combined real estate and wellness to launch a unique business during the pandemic. Plus, we'll meet two locals who are being featured in the highly anticipated Coming to America sequel starring Eddie Murphy. And we're diving into different parenting styles with our Momversation series. From free range to helicopter, the moms of KPRC2 weigh in on it all. And think you can eat 30 veggies in the month of March? We are here at Hope Farms. I'm going to tell you all about the Veg Out Challenge with Recipe for Success. All that and more happening today on Houston Life. Beep, beep. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. It is Thursday, March 4th, 2021. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. It is Friday Eve, everybody. Friday Eve. It's also Lauren Kelly's birthday today. Happy birthday, Lauren Kelly. Happy Ooh. 39th birthday. Yeah. What was that? A little strobe light action, maybe? Get the party started early. A little bit. You know, <laughs> this morning I was here at work earlier than I normally get here, and I happened to intercept Lauren in the parking lot. She was busy on her phone because I'm sure she's been returning a lot of birthday messages. And so I sort of like, she was walking toward me, but she was looking down on her phone. So I just waited for her. Did <laughs> you surprise her? I scared her. <laughs> I was like, happy birthday. And she screamed. But then I feel like my karma came back to me. You know, uh -oh. I, you know how I love playing pranks on people, right? You do? Well, because you're born on April 1st. Born on April Fool's you're, Day. You're a natural prankster. It's really hard to prank you. It's in my blood. So every day when I go to get my earpiece out of, there's a little drawer here in Studio B. I go to get my earpiece out. I don't even remember which member of our staff put a, a plastic roach. Was it you, Jason? Jason, of course. I love it. I love it. I think it's so cool when people play pranks. So there's a plastic roach in my little drawer, right? And we have fake bugs around the building. Brandon and I, we use them at home. They're very handy, right? Very handy. Sometimes you I never put, know where you're going to need one. <laughs> right. <laughs> put a little fake roach next to the mouthwash. I mean, it is cheap, really fun, you know, entertainment. Right. So today, I was changing my clothes in the makeup room, and I put on this shirt. Okay. I love this shirt, Mizzen in Maine. Very high, cute. High performance, it, you know, you don't sweat through it. So I grabbed my, my shirt, and as I was putting it on, I felt a little something. In the shirt? It wasn't my earpiece. It was definitely like on my neck. I felt a little something. And then when that something fell to the floor, I was like, oh my gosh, I am so proud of my team. They are trying to prank me. Well, it turns out we have some video of what it actually was. Oh, yeah, there it is. <gasps> a lizard? You had a lizard in your shirt? <laughs> it was on my neck. Oh, my word. And it was fast. It's, they are fast. Where did it go? Did you get it? Well, I caught him, and then, you know, humanely, I yes. sang, sang to it, sort of talked. We had a great conversation. One-sided, of course. Yeah, I asked him why he was hanging out in my shirt, but... It was the audition. Came here's in for the an audition. thing. Ever since... Are you... <laughs> ever since then, it's, it's almost like nails on a chalkboard. I have no problem with lizards. I love them. They're all over our yard, but... I don't want it on my neck. I don't want it on my neck. And I thought of you because you have this wretched fear of them. I do because they get all over the place. And it was sort of like that one lizard that we had in the house. After We open up the door and Oscar runs for them. And uh, it was loose in the house. Had to sleep there. I mean, I felt it crawling on me all night. And then I woke up the next day. And there it was in the sink, in the bathroom. See, it was just waiting for you. To do what? <laughs> <laughs> to take him outside. <laughs> take a bath? What was happening? Well, word to the wise. Oh. Next time you get dressed in our makeup room, be warned. You know the day you told uh, the story about being fearful of lizards? True story. I was driving away from work on the way home. I don't know why this is happening all of a sudden, but I was driving home, and I saw something out my side mirror. There was a very large mirror along for the ride on my car. There was a very large mirror? Lizard, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you believe there was a wow, mirror on the side of my giant car? Mirror. <laughs> on the side, on the outside, yeah. not on the inside. On the though. outside, a little stowaway. Did I, I ever tell you the story about my Uncle Cart? 
God rest his soul. Cart? But Uncle Carter, we called him Uncle Cart. Oh, I was like. Carter is his first name. And he was driving and windows down. It was a beautiful spring day. And uh, he was driving uh, and was singing, had his kind of elbow out the window. And there was a bee in the car. The, the bee flew into the car, so he was kind of swatting it, got a little nervous, whatever. And uh, bee, said bee, flew in his mouth. <laughs> no. Stung him in his mouth. He took out like four mailboxes <laughs> on the side of the road. It was, it was very tragic. <laughs> and then after it was all said and done, there, zzz, there goes the bee out the car. See you later. Have fun cleaning up. Like nothing ever happened. Nothing happened. Well, if the bee stung him, he flew off to die, because after they sting you, they oh, die, right? Well, that's what happens. Oh, man. Wow. Well, sometimes yes. bad bee stings happen to good people. <laughs> good people. That could have been really dangerous. <gasps> I know. Same driveway, though. My mom left her car running to visit them, and uh, seven hours later goes out, and the car was running in the driveway. Never turned it off. Uh, Weird things happen to <laughs> Seven hours later, didn't it run out of gas? Oh, well, barely. Yeah. Oh. She had a full tank, not when wow. she left, though. Okay. <laughs> well, that's one way to save the environment. Just leave the car running <laughs> for seven hours. Idling. <laughs> well, again, keep an eye out for lizards around the building, because apparently... Now... <laughs> they're here. And uh, think of all the clothes that you have in that makeup room. Can you imagine putting on a shirt and no. there's a lizard inside and it's on your neck? I couldn't believe it. I would have passed out. It happened. I would have passed out. Okay. No way. Okay, well, no more lizard stories for the rest of the day. We promise. Promise. No more bug stories. You're just going to be like this, itching the back of your neck. <laughs> okay, after <laughs> the break, find out how your next recipe for, or receipt rather, for office supplies could land you a free lunch. Plus, think you could eat 30 different vegetables in the month of March. Lauren Kelly is showing us how to veg out in this challenge from Recipe for Success. Well, they're making healthy eating fun. Houston Life is back in two minutes. She's working hard, too. Yes, she is. This was quite the talker today for our meeting. And check this out, you guys. A burger joint in Toronto is helping you expense your lunch. Sort of. Scam your lunch. Pretty much, right? So it's called Good Fortune Burger in Toronto. They've changed the name of some of the items on their menu to office-centric titles so then you can expense your next meal. Its signature fortune burger has now become basic steel stapler, while the diamond chicken burger is now a mini dry <laughs> erase board. Okay. So it comes off on the receipt as this is what you've ordered. I mean, they're doing this for publicity, right? Because obviously I'm sure. it's like how to cheat. Yeah, it's a scam, right? I mean, how to scam on your expense report. Yeah. Well, something tells me th that's not going to work out well. Uh, have you ever had to expense anything th strange? Or like buy something weird for work? I, I, I always bought stuff for work, right? Once I landed here, the, it was like a game-changingly weird yeah, list I mean, of things to buy. The Madonna costume, like the cone what costume. What cones? Ice cream cones? Part of the brassiere what area. Do you mean? <laughs> Don't understand. Could you be more specific, please? Wigs. All of that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. There were so many things. As I was going through my Amazon cart today, over the past few years, I have purchased some of the weirdest things for Houston life. Like? Like an inflatable alligator, a bunch of wigs. Oh, the mustache, alligator. That's right. All kinds of things, right? Or even like calling people, calling local stores and saying, hey, do you have uh, one of those? Look. Look at that. That's just a screenshot of some of the things I purchased. The three wigs, the inflatable alligator. And here's the thing, we don't have to put food on there. I mean, this is basically what we have to show. This is what we needed. And we prove it because we wore it on the show. Blue eyeliner, maybe a choker. Guess, can you guess what I bought these things for? Are you asking me yeah. or the audience? Everyone. <laughs> we don't have an audience, but um, <laughs> was that Elton John? No, that was Britney. Britney in Paris. No, this right here, this was for, well, the one, the page before, that was for Joe Exotic from oh, Tiger King. Oh, the blue eyeliner. And this was for the, the, the Halloween cat. show. So our producers, Kat and, Kat and Olivia, they both dressed up in this outfit, and then they just stood in our dark studio and scared people. And it worked, too. Remember the screams from people? Oh, it really worked. I know. What? Do you remember that year we... We baited people in the building. It was terrible. Yes, we awful. Free was this pizza the in Studio B. <laughs> right. Free pizza in Studio B. And when they came in to get the pizza, someone jumped out of a coffin and scared them. 
We're horrible people. Horrible people. No wonder I have lizards on my neck. Well, we want to hear from you. What is the weirdest thing you've had to buy or expense for work? Join the conversation by posting on our Houston Life Facebook page. Well, the ninth annual Veg Out Challenge from Recipe for Success Foundation challenges participants to eat 30 different vegetables during the month of March. Basically, a different veggie every day. Every day. It's a really great thing to do. And whether you eat all 30 in a week or do different vegetable every day, it's totally up to you. Yeah, uh, it's more difficult than it sounds. Yeah. The program is designed to make healthy eating fun by turning it into a game. Lauren Kelly is at Hope Farms today with info on how we can all get in on the challenge. Lauren, 30 different vegetables during the month, right? You can't double up. That's right. You can do whatever you want. If you want to eat a all in one week, more power to you. And today, especially, Gracie Kavnar, she's the founder of Recipe for Success. She's telling us all about the challenge and why you got into this in the first place. Well, the Veg Out Challenge is a project of Recipe for Success Foundation. And important that we're here today because today is Worldwide Obesity Awareness Day. Okay. And I started Recipe for Success in... 15 years ago, in 2005, to combat childhood obesity with programs that teach, empower, and inspire healthy eating. And we like to think that the Veg Out Challenge does all three of those. Absolutely it does. Because it sure. makes a game out of healthy eating. You know, we have the largest nutrition education program in the country in schools where we are getting kids excited about eating fresh vegetables. And we do that by making it delicious and fun. And that's what we are doing with the Veg Out Challenge. It's so, so wonderful. We're here today at Hope Farms, one of our favorite places. We're going to talk all about how you can help the farm in just a little bit. But I also want to mention, I went to Salada today, and they are one of the sponsors. I got almost all of my veggies in in one meal. Exactly. Now, does that take the fun out of it? Because you can't, <laughs> like, be posting all the time. But right. you can actually get points and keep going past 30. You don't have to stop at 30. Gotcha. Right? And there's lots of incentives, lots of things that should drive you and make you want to do this. It's a nice and colorful plate to have. If you guys need more info, veg out with RFS.org. Lots more info with Gracie and with Tyler Froberg here at Hope Farms coming up a little bit later on the show. We're going to veg out, Gracie, so you guys don't go anywhere. Back to you, Derek and Courtney, in the studio. All right, Lauren, thanks so much. All right, here's a question. Do you like to win big? Then you want to enter your chance to spin the Houston Life prize wheel. It's so much fun. Every Friday we spin to see what you might win right here live on the show, complete with sparkly jacket. I should add. Last week's winner was Catherine from Spring Valley who won a $100 gift card to Landry's. And you could be our next big winner and have your chance to spin to win. You can win a gift card like Catherine did, Houston Life swag, and even some swag from your favorite NBC shows, which we have some of them right here. This is a new coffee mug from The Keenan Show. Check out this uh, cup from Mayer on NBC. And if you like to drink coffee, that's like uh, four cups right there. I so know. Mr. Mayer mug. And then uh, Young Rock. The lunch pail. Love a good lunch box. All kinds of cool NBC gear. All you have to do is head to click to Houston.com slash contests. Click on the Houston Life prize wheel. You can't miss it for your chance to enter to spin and win. And if you head to our Instagram stories right now, you can help vote on my prize wheel costume for tomorrow. Oh, give us a hint, Courtney. Mm -mm. What are the options? Feathers, sparkle, glitter. You pick. Are you finally living out your Vegas showgirl dreams? I'm going to try. <laughs> You're going to be so good at this. I can't wait. All right. After the break, the moms are back. Britta, Amy, Sophia, and Courtney. Today's topic is all about parenting styles, and it is a good one. And later, being featured in the sequel to the iconic 1988 film, Coming to America. We are going behind the scenes with two Houstonians who are in the film. Houston Life will be right back. Welcome back. You know, when it comes to parenting, do you feel like you hover over your kids or do you let them roam free? Or maybe you're kind of in the middle. Whatever your style, you are definitely not alone. That's what we learned in today's Momversation. Ladies, I want to know your parenting style when it comes to that. What's interesting, I mean, we parent our kids differently, right? Each kid yes. is kind of parented a little bit yes. differently. Yes, yeah. for You sure. agree with that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it might change given well, like, what's going on. Right. Yeah. I could look at Connor and he just, he, done. he's done. 
AJ is a totally different <laughs> scenario. He's that's not, he don't much. care. He don't care how I look at him. He's like, what are you like, going to do to me? That's nice. <laughs> nice look. Yeah, I'll fight you, lady. That's yeah. what he says. <laughs> Looking at these faces, and I know you, we are not free range no. parents. No. <laughs> no. Maybe the husbands might be, but these ladies yeah. certainly yeah. aren't. <laughs> helicopter? Are there a few helicopters here? Um, Low flying helicopters? Maybe, maybe a little bit of a helicopter <laughs> with the four year old, only because I know she will cut off her hair on her own. Oh, my gosh. Like she did. Is like she a Spitfire? Yes. You call her the Texas tornado. Oh. She just will go in. She does what she wants. She wants to take, you know, scissors, cuts paper everywhere, just kind of goes through the house. And I got to watch her. I got to watch her because she'll, she, she'll try to take a knife and cut her own sandwich, you know, and she's four. So she's that's not going to work. Trying to be independent. Right. That's not yeah. going to work. <laughs> we just have to watch her. Yeah. So I kind of hover over Leora. Uh, permissive or authoritative. Where are we at? With well, you some know, of it's these? bad when my, so my nine year old told me, like I'm, I'm telling my five-year-old, you can't do that. Okay, then I said, you don't get your tablet tomorrow. And then my nine-year-old says, but mom, you actually have to follow through. Oh. And not give him the tablet tomorrow. And I was like, okay. All right. Hey, okay. don't say that in front of her. I know. <laughs> That's a, psst, hey mom, step right, up here exactly. moment. I have a feeling like all of us are kind of a little helicoptery just because of the bit. world and kind of the things that we yeah, see. Yeah. yeah, well I think that's a huge part of it. When you work in the news and you hear absolutely every Everything. worst story that you can hear, yes. it really messes with how you look at your kids. And you're right. like, oh my goodness, but this could happen, that could happen, this could at happen. At any moment. Yeah, at any moment. And you're like, okay, take a take a breath. Oh, there are good people out there. You're going to be okay. Yeah. But I do think that it changes how people in the news parent kids because mm -hmm. it's just you hear all these stories and it's impossible to to, you know, get it out of your head. Right. And I do think, you know, we grew up in a time where it would, you know, we were playing outside until it was dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We would be riding our bikes or we'd be roller skating and we're, yep. you know, oh, I got to go. I think my mom's calling mom me calls. or, you know, right. and I mean, I would never do that. Well, uh, right. Uh, <laughs> no. I'm like, I can't see no. you. You are yeah. not going anywhere. Yeah. Right. yeah. That yeah. is so crazy. Mm -hmm. Remember, like, getting dropped off at the mall? Yes. yes. Right. Uh, never doing that. Right. right. I went to a movie theater at 13. No. no. Yeah, I mean, Connor's Definitely. 13. Never. You wouldn't not, let your no. kid go to the movie theater at 13? I mean, I'll if probably be... If you drop him off and you pick him up? I'll be two rows no. behind him. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not saying I'll be the sitting theater. there. Yep, I'll like, be in the theater. I think, I mean, we're so far away from 13. So right. I think that's also hard because yeah. if you're not in it, you right. know, yeah. I think your perspective changes. I think I would sit in the back of the theater, though. I'd be like, For okay, sure. if you want to... Because, I mean, at 13, <laughs> I mean, I had a boyfriend. I don't know. Now we're going to get... Oh, my God! Yeah, I think my what first boyfriend was like fourth grade. Oh but I mean, you're not, you're like kidding, we were, right? You know, <laughs> Courtney's shocked. Everybody's probably shocked because I'm kind of known as like the goody goody. But um, you know, I I went to a movie. I went and saw Titanic with my boyfriend in 13. Titanic. Oh, wow. that's a date There's movie. A scene. <laughs> right? No, 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 I'm I'm shocked shocked at you. No, I thought that would be Amy. Not all you. these emails. <laughs> well, I mean, didn't everybody have a boyfriend at 13? I don't think Sorry. so. Boyfriend. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Back then, it was somebody that you held their hand and they somebody were your best driving friend. Around. Yeah. It's a lot different right. than what boyfriends are considered these Today, days. Exactly. Sure. I mean, yeah. You know, but yeah, I mean, I I went to the movies, but I really don't think I'd be comfortable with that now. No, I think I would I mean, just hang out in the back of the theater just to make sure that they were okay. Yeah. And, you know, Connor's 13. If he literally came to me tomorrow and said, hey, mom, I'm going to go to the movies with a girl, uh, no, you're not. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't think so. I feel, really? I feel like I would be okay with the movies if I drop them off and I pick them up, but maybe not. I'm not. Yeah. I don't know. I still have I don't think there's I anything can't. wrong with you Here's. being cool with that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're that type of mom. No, 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 no. You're a cool mom, Amy. You're a cool mom. Not like yeah, that's but not regular moms. I think yeah. it's totally important to like embrace the fact that you can have different views from other people. Right. right. You know what I mean, like just because I'd be like, oh, I'm not just okay with that. Out, right. I definitely think it's good to like with your girlfriends be like, hey, that's totally cool, man. Yeah. Like whatever, whatever <laughs> works it. for your family is right. what you got to do. Good. Absolutely. And that's the mom guilt because then you're like, right. oh, I feel bad because I'm not that kind of parent. And it's okay because it works for you. Right. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is too, you know, what's interesting is when people start posting things, you know, because we all get sucked into social media. Yeah. And, you know, my kid is volunteering here and my kid's learning Mandarin and yeah. my kid's right. learning violin. And I'm right. thinking, and my we kids, are lucky to just uh, get through right, it on right. a daily basis. Yeah. Like, I lived today. <laughs> you know? We're breathing, right. we're breathing, we're breathing. Yes. 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 No, 
No broken bones, yes. And we all ate a dinner. Oh my yeah. goodness. I mean, and sometimes that dinner is Chick-fil-A. I'm yes. gonna be totally honest oh, with you. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Yep. It Absolutely. happens, and I have no, there's no shame in my wow. game. I will roll through that drive through oh, yep. and be I, happy about it. We're a family that has four different dinners, and I always said that I would Are never you really? do that. Yeah, yes. us too. And we're like a diner, but you know what? It works for us. They right. And because happy. Henry has his menu that works for him. Right. And we're not going to mess with that. And we've worked very hard. It's well balanced. He's got everything in there. And if it's the same thing every night, cool. No problem. Yeah. yeah. And then I have the baby that I'm just like, just eat something. Just eat something. Right. Anything. Right. Like we'll red shirt. Sure. We'll Go. make dinner, and Ella, who's eight, is very picky. Mm. This is disgusting. I'm not <laughs> eating this. Okay, <laughs> then go make yourself something. Make a sandwich. Right. But, you know you where know. the refrigerator yeah. is. And Get then it other done. nights, I'm like, oh, I feel bad. Okay, do you want some chicken tenders? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, we'll right. make something. Depending you know, on your energy level. Depending on my energy yes. level, did I nap that day? Do I feel good? Yeah, and it's just what you can do, you know, mm -hmm. what you can do that day as a mom. By far, I loved all of these conversations all week, but today's conversation was my favorite. You know, really hearing their parenting styles, what they would do, and Britta, boyfriend at, at 13. 13. I am equally shocked. I know. But I it needed is more true. information. When I was that age, at yeah. 13, I was going to the movie theater, and I, I was hanging out with friends. But right. now that my nieces are approaching that age, my oldest niece is 12. Right. And it just seems, wow, they seem so young. I, I don't want them out of my sight, you know? Exactly. And, and our world was very different back then, right? Back then. But it, it's different than how our kids are growing up today. And, and I guess that's sort of where I'm feeling. I'm just not comfortable with that decision. I mean, if, you know, if it's happen, if I'm two rows behind him, I'll be okay with that. It makes you appreciate your mom probably even more though, right? Absolutely. As we get older, it's like, oh, well, no wonder my mom insisted on being my date to the Phil Collins concert. I know, right? Yeah. Thanks, mom, for everything. Thanks, really. mom. We you love you. You really did know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> for the complete interview and more information, just head over to our website, HoustonLife.tv. That's where it is. Tomorrow, we are rounding out our Momversation series with the best and worst parenting advice we ever received. Oh, Some I'm glad stuff. you're doing the worst advice as well. That'll be great. All right, looking forward to it. Coming up on Houston Life, expert tips to get your garden back in shape after that recent winter freeze. And we're going to get a check of what Keith, Lauren, and Frank have coming up for the news at 4. We're back in two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Life on this Friday Eve. Derek and Courtney here with you. We can see the weekend. We sure can. Now let's check in with Keith, Lauren, and Frank for a look at what's coming up at 4 and what we can expect from the weather. Hey, guys. Yes. You, you have to be really excited about Friday to call Thursday Friday <laughs> Eve. I just want to Absolutely, say Absolutely, girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> There's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. It is not a train. It is the weekend. Yes, unless it's a fun train. That's, that's the kind of train we want. Yes. Right. I like that. All right. Um, want to talk about the weather first. Yeah. Nice and sunny afternoon but frankly here there is a front headed our way that could bring some changes yeah. by the way it's monday eve eve, eve so <laughs> <laughs> you look at it, right? mm. there are but enjoy this and enjoy this weekend which we're going to get to uh, friday but the weekend's looking spectacular galveston looks wonderful right now take a look from our city cam there from uh, abacus it's just fabulous out 70 72 64 down on the island right now we've actually got southeast winds kicking in but the air over the gulf is dry so the humidity really isn't going up much it's a lovely afternoon, and it's going to be a nice evening as well. So if you head out to walk the dog or take a jog, 71 at 4, 69, 66, 63 at 7. Exact track radar is showing the system we're watching. And you can see this little spin right here. That's a little curl. That's the low-pressure system and associated front. So that's what's heading our way. So I'll put this in motion, and you can see as this moves in, the clouds for tomorrow... We'll be here tomorrow morning. So this is 7, 7.30. So we'll wake up to cloudy skies. And then as we go through the uh, afternoon hours, we'll see a few sprinkles and maybe some drizzle move through. This isn't a big deal. It's going to move in and it's going to move out. By the time we, this is Friday at 11. By the time we get to Friday evening, we're already clearing out for what's going to be a really nice weekend. We'll talk more about it coming up. But it's going to be a nice evening. Drizzle for Friday. We'll go to uh, specific amounts there. And then a super spring weekend. All your... Eve, Eve weekend forecast. <laughs> Straight ahead. We are ready, ready, ready for it. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> All right, uh, look at now some of the stories that we're going to be covering this afternoon. Some interesting news regarding the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. What we're learning about a new side effect in people who have received their first dose of the shot. What you need to look for. Plus, after 44 years covering news in the city of Houston, beloved KPRC2 reporter 
Phil Archer is retiring. In case you missed it, Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner has declared today Phil Archer Day. Joining us during all of our afternoon newscasts as we celebrate Phil Archer's storied 44-year career. That's right. Here I, in Houston. I, I would. I think it's apt to say legend. That that makes him I sound think, old. Yes. But Phil, Phil's not old at that. all. He's he's as you young at heart as anybody. That is true. That is Love true. Phil Archer. I still can't believe this day is here, yeah. but uh, the proclamation well deserved. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Indeed. All right. We'll see you guys at four o'clock. Well, the winter storm Yuri wreaked havoc on our plants, our trees, our grass across the entire area. But it's possible. For some of this to survive. Keep your fingers crossed. Joining us with helpful post-freeze tips is Brent Moon, horticultural manager with the Houston Botanic Garden. Brent, thank you so much for your time today. And listen, this yeah. storm, I mean, we were all told we should prepare, cover our plants, despite the, the, the valiant efforts by so many people. A lot of folks out there have a lot of dead plants. So what's the first thing to do? That's right. Well, the first thing you want to do if you haven't done it already is you want to remove that mushy foliage that looks like um, dead, brown, decaying foliage. It's very important to go ahead and get that off if you haven't already because what that does is it allows sunlight and air to get down to the center of the crown of the plant and that'll help facilitate regrowth and pre prevent any kind of other additional you know, fungal issues that might be going on. Okay, That's well, what about, what about plants that look like they've been like they're dead. So I have hibiscus or these foxtail, you impressed and I know the names. Um, it looks like there, there's no hope. I mean, what do we do with those? Yeah, look, they can look pretty bleak and desolate and it is okay to go ahead if you want to wait a little while just to give it a little bit longer. Some things, you know, like, like hibiscus, hamelia, things like that. Um, you can pretty much tell some of those are dead to the ground. You can go ahead and cut some of those back pretty far. If, if you want to be cautious and wait just a little bit longer, you can give it another two or three weeks. You might start seeing some little green buds appearing along the bottom of the stems, and that will give you a really good indication of where to cut back to. But don't be afraid to cut them all the way back if needed? For, for certain things, yes. Some, some things, if you do want to wait a little while longer, it could keep you from, you know, prevent you from cutting back too far and cutting good growth. Like the oleanders you're showing there, those are probably a good bet that they're dead to the ground. Same for the hamelia that you're seeing, um, seeing us cut back here. They're doing what we call the scratch test. They were checking to see if there was any green underneath the bark. And if there is, then you could cut to that point. But for this one, we determined that it was dead pretty much to the ground. So they were going to go ahead and take that one down pretty low. What about palms? Because this is something I was driving through Midtown the other day, Brent, and I noticed mm -hmm. all these beautiful palm trees, birds of paradise, sago palms, right? The palm yeah. fronds look totally brown and dead. So is it safe to say as a general rule of thumb, if something is brown, no matter what type of plant it is, just cut it off, cut it back? It really depends. It's hard to give a blanket statement like that, especially on especially on palms. Um, there are certain ones that are pretty hardy. Some of the Washingtonias, the sable palms are pretty hardy. Pindo palms have proven pretty hardy. Other ones like your pygmy date palms, the queen palms, uh, they're, they're all going to look pretty brown right now as a general rule. And, it, and it's typically okay to go ahead and cut the leaves off, but I would hold off on digging things out like the pygmy date palms and queen palms. Sometimes those might take two or three months before they show any regrowth. So you do have to practice some patience if you don't want to possibly rip a plant out that's going to come back. It's a bit of a wait and see game, to be honest with you. I understand too. And what about grass? I know, you know, everybody on my street, the grass is, it looks completely dead. And then all of a sudden four houses down, somebody else's grass is totally green. So will that grass come back? So if it's green, most likely they overseed it with rye, which is a cool season grass. So the, the rye grass is perfectly fine. So what you're seeing that's brown is likely St. Augustine, Bermuda grass, or potentially uh, centipede grass. Um, don't see a lot of that here. Those are warm season grasses. They turn brown as a general rule in winter anyhow. And then uh, the, the hand mother nature dealt us a couple weeks ago made the grass really turn brown unless it's a cool season. But most of those should come back. Okay. And Brent, before we let you go, the Houston Botanic Garden, for uh, our viewers mm -hmm. who have not yet paid you a visit, you guys are located on the south side of the loop, just outside the loop, east of 45. It is such a treasure. Are you still welcoming the public? Absolutely. Yes, we will. Um, we, we closed up only like for a day or so just so we can work on some things, but we've been back open for two weeks. You know, we're actively cleaning up the gardens. There's still plenty of beautiful stuff for people to come see here. Our trails are open for walking, and, and we're already seeing signs of plants starting to regenerate new growth. So there's, there's plenty to come see. We welcome everybody to come out and see us. It's a beautiful space for sure. Brent Moon, thanks so mm -hmm. much for joining us today and great information mm -hmm. to share with everyone.
And by the way, to connect with Brent, we do have a link on our HoustonLife.tv Facebook or uh, website page. Sorry. We sure do. All right, coming up, how a husband and wife team came together to create a unique wellness concept in Houston. And do you remember the hit film Coming to America with Eddie Murphy? Oh, yeah. Of course you do. It's a favorite. Starring in the sequel, and Joe Sam spoke to them. I sure did. I had a great time speaking with them. And we are just one day away from the return of Coming to America starring Eddie Murphy. I'll introduce you to two of those local talents sharing the spotlight with some of its biggest stars. Houston Life will be right back. to Houston Life. It's been over 30 years since the release of Coming to America, the cultural film starring Eddie Murphy as Prince Akeem. Now it's finally back with a sequel, and I spoke with two locals featured in the film, a talented dancer and drummer with the Kumai Kelly Ensemble, about their experience on set of this huge production. Pair the royal chant. We are going back to America. Oh, hell no, your majesty. Christina, Cedric, this is really exciting. We are getting ready to watch Coming to America 2, the remake of the iconic movie here. And in our community, it's a huge, huge movie. Like you said, hugeness of it all is going to be great. And you two are both featured in it. So let's get ready to dive all into how it was being on set. Being on set was amazing. You could see right across my, from my honey wagon was John Amos's trailer. And then uh, right down next to that was Arsenio Halls. And then, of course, a little further down was Shari Headley and Garcelle Bouvet. So all of the celebrities were literally right there. We shared the same makeup and hair. And being on set was an amazing experience. Now, both of you got a chance to meet some really huge stars at Tyler Perry Studios. But, Christina, you were actually told by one celebrity, Gladys Knight, that you did an amazing job. So we, I'm sitting, waiting for us to maybe film again, and she did her part because she had somewhere else to be, and she walked out while she was going into her dressing room, and she said, hey, baby, was that you dancing? You did good. I saw you. <laughs> And I fell to pieces. I sat there with my mouth open like, my mom is going to be over the moon when I take this picture. There we go. <laughs> yes. And being able to have Houston locals in the movie, that's going to be even better for us living here in Houston that's watching the movie. It's just an honor. In fact, Arsenio Hall came over and drummed with us. What? Yeah, so he, and I didn't know he was that tall. He's really tall. But that's all. So, people, people say the same thing about me in person. <laughs> so he came and he drummed, and it was exciting. He's just a regular person like we are. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we just had a blast out there filming. I just want to say an incredible job to both of you for representing Houston on such a huge stage in one of the most highly anticipated movies in the black community. We're grateful for the experience. We thank you for inviting us. And so we just pleased to represent Houston very well. And it's a testament to hard work as well. So it's, it's just, it's this once in a lifetime experience. Absolutely. It is going to be an experience for us to watch this all. Now, Coming to America premieres tomorrow on Amazon Prime, and we'll have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv, where you can learn more about the film and our two local stars being featured in it. Courtney Derrick, this is a big, big deal for them because there was thousands of people that auditioned for these roles mm -hmm. and to be in the cast. And I'm hearing that Christina, she actually has a solo in the feature, so I can't wait to see her solo performance in this movie. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Super high energy, too. It looks like a great workout. Yeah, it, yeah. you burn some calories off doing this, and I'm going to burn calories rewatching it over and over again, <laughs> just like I did with the original film from 1988. I'm right there with you. I can't <laughs> wait to see it. All right, Joe, thanks so much. Absolutely. Well, they say good partners bring out the best in each other, right? And that's definitely the case for a local couple who use their individual strengths to create a new concept here in Houston. Yeah, Dr. Sonia Krish and her husband, Sonny Somaya, combined their backgrounds in medicine and real estate to launch a unique business during the pandemic. Sonia and I met in the summer of, of 2013. We were both out with our friends at a bar, a nice bar in, in Montrose. Things moved pretty quickly after that. We went on our first date the next day. We hopped on a plane to Costa Rica a month later. We moved pretty quickly. Um, we got married within, I think, a year soon after. Yeah, about a year. Thanks so much for your really welcome. Your first dance was a good one. 
I was a neurologist. I was in neurology training right here in Houston. And we were looking for space for my private practice after I was done training. And it was not something that I was able to do at that time. And I realized that, you know, a lot of practitioners, a lot of my colleagues were facing the same issue. So as, as someone that has a background in commercial real estate is looking at properties all of the time, you know, we started to think, let's figure out a solution for her, but then maybe we can open it up also to other people in the community as well. And it's not just physicians, but the wellness community as a whole. We have a very hard time starting our practices. And I think having something that's flexible and that's affordable is paramount because it really just gives practitioners the chance to start, to start to chase their dreams. And um, I think that's what we're trying to accomplish here at Wellness Space. For us, it's more than just the space. It's really the community that we're, we're developing. Yeah, it's, it's running a solo practice with the support of a group practice. So yeah. I think that's really helpful, especially for the newbies, you know, like yourself, <laughs> to start yeah, out. It's, it's, it's really it's, helpful. Yeah, that's what we're really, really happy about. You can tell they like each other, right? Sonny and Dr. Sonia are here now with more about their journey. Welcome to you both. Welcome to Houston Life. Let me get this straight. Married, you've got this business together. You're raising two children together. I'm serious. I mean, you must have incredibly strong communication skills to make this happen. Yeah, you know, it's 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 been a challenging experience. Uh, you know, we we have a family with two small kids, two full-time jobs, and we're launching a business during a pandemic. It's been quite a ride, um, but you know, it's taught us to be extremely efficient with our time and really cherish those small moments that we have with our kids. Because you know, we're working, and when we are doing that, we we have to be hyper productive. But when we're with the kids, we have to be present. It's just really forced us to really cherish the delicious moments we have with our family, however few they, as they may be, but we're definitely present in those moments. I love how you called it delicious moments. I'm going to remember that. That is absolutely, it's well said. You know, the saying is busy people get it done. It's sort of like we don't know what it feels like to just be idle. And clearly, you two are very busy. You're busy parents. You're busy business owners. But let's really talk about the pandemic effect in launching this space. I would imagine it was not only a challenge, but it was kind of difficult. Yeah, so we actually started right at the beginning of the pandemic. We signed the lease to our space at the end of February, and then we started hearing about all the shutdowns. So we were quite nervous, but I think that having a space that's flexible has been really important for practitioners who've been displaced during the pandemic. So we've been getting calls for part-time space for practitioners who weren't interested in long-term leases just because there was so much uncertainty with the pandemic. We were so thankful to help these practitioners out. Yeah, and as a, as a health and wellness clinic, you know, we had to take extra precautions to make sure that everyone that walks through the doors here is safe and feels comfortable. and. You know, I think we took it, took it as an opportunity, you know, getting an opportunity to start this from the scratch. Every decision we made was with COVID in mind. So we put in, you know, very specific measures to protect and combat COVID. For example, we have sinks in every room. We have a completely digital contactless check-in kiosk for patients. So it's those little things that, you know, make wellness space a, a comfortable and inviting place for everyone. Your story is an inspiration. Uh, before we let you go, have you learned anything about each other during this last year? Yeah, I'd say, you know, <laughs> I'd say we are very different people. Uh, we have different philosophies and different ways of approaching things. I am very much an analytical person who, you know, obsesses over details and she's more of a visionary. She's already passed the finish line before we get started in most cases. So it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's definitely a challenge, but I think our, our different personalities work well together. And we strongly believe that if we are doing this together, we're able to accomplish a lot more than we ever would if we were doing this alone. Yeah, I would say that if there's a goal that I see that I'm already sprinting towards it, but I think it's really important to learn from each other. And Sunny has taught me to slow down. I think there's, beauty and magic in the pursuit of a goal and so in creating wellness space we were i was able to slow down really take in the surrounding and i was able to enjoy the process in creating something that's helping our community okay very nice dr sonia and sunny it's great to meet you both congrats on the business and we do have a link to connect with sunny and sonia on our website houstonlife.tv we'll be right back thank you for having us thank, thank you thank you
So the ninth annual Veg Out Challenge with Recipe for Success has begun. That is challenging you to eat 30 veggies amongst the month of March. If you can do it in 30 days, it's going to be fantastic. And it's also going to help our friends right here at Hope Farms. We've had Tyler Froberg, Farmer Froberg on with us before with Hope Farms. You got to tell us what happened because you lost a lot of the vegetation and the, and the products with the freeze. Absolutely. So just like everyone else across the state, we certainly face challenges during the polar vortex. Let's see uh, what we've got. What yeah, happened? so, you know, a lot of this was covered in vegetables uh, up until two weeks ago. Uh, unfortunately, we, you know, we did lose quite a bit, up to 60% of our crops in the field. However, we are resilient people us here in Texas. Absolutely. And so we began to rebuild, recover, uh, start to come back, you know. As we go through Veg Out this month, it's quite a fun month for us. There's several ways that everyone could help us here at the farm. Okay, tell us. First and foremost, come get your vegetables from us. We we are we we've started to replant. We were able to save some stuff that you could come out and get right here at Hope Farm Saturday, nine to one. You could see us at Bearings uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and of course support our farm share uh, delivered to your door in the city uh, every Tuesday. Oh, that's so starting cool. April first. And you know what? great about Hope Farms, Tyler, I don't think people remember or realize that this is a farm in the middle of the city, in the direct middle of the city, Absolutely. and we just want to do whatever we can to help you guys, especially by joining the Recipe for Success Veg Out. More info at HoustonLife.tv. Back to you guys in studio. Well, Lauren, we can't let you go without wishing you a proper happy, happy birthday. birthday. Oh, thank you guys. You're so sweet. And That's listen, so nice. I told you 26 is the best. <laughs> well, we can't imagine Houston life without you, Lauren. We do have a lot of sweets back here at the office. But in the meantime, why don't you have a nice little birthday salad there on the farm? I would love a birthday. Tyler, can I make a birthday salad? Absolutely. Okay. Let's do it. Let's go quick. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Happy birthday, girlfriend. Perfect day to be outside. Thank you, guys. Very nice. All right, after the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including a big star with quite an entourage. Mm -hmm. And as we head to break, let's check in with Nichelle Turner for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Nichelle. Hi there, Derek and Courtney. Tonight on ET, the latest from the royal family, why tensions are escalating over the timing of Harry and Meghan's tell-all. You do not want to miss this. That's tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. Now, stay right there. Houston Life will be right back. Coming up on tomorrow's Houston Life, the Houston Zoo is going prehistoric. We get a behind the scenes look on how they are bringing history to life. Plus Emmy and Golden Globe winning actor Jeremy Piven is coming to Houston. We'll have a chat with him and have details on where you can catch him on Friday and Saturday nights. My mom's a big fan of his. I love him. He's a Chicago native. And yep. we're rounding out our mom versation series with the best and worst parenting advice these moms have received. Something tells me this is going to be another <laughs> great conversation. Now let's get to some of your responses to our question of the day. What's the weirdest thing you've ever bought or expensed for work? Starting with you or Carly. Not weird, but rather cool. A $200 bottle of wine for Scott Kelly in a company suite I was hosting at the Toyota Center. Mm. Sounds like a nice little meet and mingle. I know. Okay, Rachel writes in, almost, almost, but they were not available on the date I needed. An elephant appearance. Oh. Oh. Interesting. Okay. I'd like to hear more about that. Liz writes in, not me, but one of our executives tried to submit the cost of his haircut as a trip expense. He maintained it was only necessary because he was going to be out of town during his regular, regular. haircut. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Uh -huh. Not. It was declined. He also tried to expense no. his lawn mowing costs. I mean, I'm guessing this guy doesn't work there anymore. That's just flat out. Wrong. And ridiculous. Lawn mowing? Does he ever hear about, you know, maybe getting a new appointment for the haircut? Do it before or after? I All of that's know. very bad. Way to flag it. Some Liz. people just, I guess, feel entitled. Can you imagine submitting lawn no. mowing expenses? Actually, I'm going to try that and see. See, see what if happens. it actually goes through. No, of course not. <laughs> of course not. Well, thanks so much, as always, for your comments. And uh, what do you say we meet back here, same time, same place tomorrow? Do it all again. It's a date. Let's do it on Friday. For now, we're going to send over to Keith and Lauren for the news at four.